Y'all glad to be here today? All right, man. You know, I heard a baby crying, my grandson, and and um, I've missed that. I've missed seeing kids run around church. And it's been tough, guys. Empty sanctuary for 10 straight weeks. And, um, poor old bunny rabbit over here lifted its hand every time during the invitation, but can never get it to walk the aisle. And, um, but man, God has been so good. I mean, so good. And when I mean so good, guys, I mean God has been so good to our church through this time. I'm going to humble myself today, as I did last night, and because um, I wanted to speak on humility this morning. Because what the world needs to see more than anything right now is the church of the living God just humbling itself and showing the love and the mercy and the grace of God. What I told the church last night was, when all this first started, um, what do you think the first concern was on your pastor? Now think about pastors as a whole. What do you think my first worry was? What's that? I wish that was it. Money. That was my first thought, guys. I thought, Lord, how is, how is the church going to survive through this? You know, we, we, we're not doing tithes and offerings in the service, per se. And that was what went through my mind. And then God, in his small, still voice, reminded me, it's my church, not yours. That was week two into all this, guys. Not the first week. This was week two into this. And I'm sharing all this because I'm hoping to, to bring everything in today. And he reminded me through that for the course of this entire time that he died for us. I didn't. <laughs> I don't know how many times he reminded me that it's not your church. I just called you to shepherd it. I'm going to take care of my bride. It's my bride. I love my bride, and I'm going to take care of my bride. And so after I had my pity party, and guys, as, as sure as I'm standing here right now, guys, I cannot tell you how many times I have bragged on our church because I have seen something beautiful in these last 10 weeks, 12 weeks, guys that I wish we'd have been seeing long before <laughs> this. I have seen our church reaching out to one another. I've seen our church dropping off gifts to one another. I've seen our church praying for one another. I've seen our church be blessings to each other. I've seen our church just do things, guys, that, that has been absolutely beautiful to watch. And through all this, God reminded me through our offerings— because God has been so good to us. How many are thankful the lights are still on? How many are thankful for air conditioning? Guys, how do you think this is all happening? It's because of God's faithfulness. And your pastor finally coming to himself and realizing that, you know what? God, you love these people, our people, a whole lot more than I do. And he reminded me that, guys, time after time after time after time. I know you love them, but I love them so much more than you do. And so that changed my whole, there was a paradigm shift in my, in my thinking and, and then through all this process that, God, you've called me to shepherd them, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to make sure their needs are being met. Guys, I've said this, I don't remember if I told you guys or the Saturday Night Crowd, guys. 
I can honestly say this, guys. In the 15 years I've been doing this, this has been by far the most difficult time of ministry in my life. Because you know me. I'm hands-on, man. I love hugs and handshakes and just, that's what I love, and I've missed that. And it's been difficult. Through text messages and and, and emails and, and Facebook, and I know you guys can see my face, but I can't see yours. Not that you see my face all the time, but. And you could hear my voice through Facebook and through the live stream, but I couldn't see yours or hear yours. And I've worn the praise team out for 10 weeks of sermons. Can't get them saved either, so I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's me. But guys, again, there's, God has a way of, of bringing us to our knees and humbling us. And, and through this, Veronica goes down. So again, once again, hum, being humbled because now, not only am I taking care of, of our church, but I'm taking care of my wife. And y'all pray for Micah right now because Micah's home taking care of her. And Micah Friday, you know, you know how Micah is. He's just sarcastic, and I don't know where he gets it from. Probably from Ronica. If she's watching me right now, she's going to be upset. But she asked him to do something Friday. And again, you know Micah and his sense of humor. And he said, you've been sitting around all day. Won't you get up and do it? <laughs> so I'm like, Micah, that's probably not the smartest thing in the world for you to say. And now he's home taking care of her. So I don't know if you should pray for Ronica or pray for Micah. If Ronica can get a hold of him, she'd probably kill him. And if Micah, is, you know how Micah is, he's pushing her in a wheelchair and just flips her over or something. That's, that's just the way it's going to be. So, But, guys, that, that, has been, that that's been very humbling. It, it really has. Because, again, uh, if, if my kids are just being honest, we are very dependent upon mom. Very dependent upon mom. But guys, through all this, God has just been so good. And, and we, we've seen people being saved. We, we've, God's given us opportunities to minister. And even in the hospital, God gave us opportunity to witness to doctors and nurses. And, and I told you guys a story last week about our neighbors who aren't the most conservative people on the planet. And, but we've loved on them for five and a half years. And, and we really haven't had like conversations with them, not because of us, but because, again, they just... They would never approach us. And and I told you guys last week, I was out cutting my grass last Saturday, and he actually approached me and said, we heard about Ronica. We saw what happened to Ronica. And please, if there's anything that we can do, please just come over, knock on our door, and let us know. Guys, I started weeping cutting my grass. Honestly, guys, I'm not not kidding. I'm weeping. So I I, I go in the house, and I tell Ronica, I'm like, you want to hear something again just so humbling? I said, I hate the fact that you're going through so much pain and, and you're not able to, to, to do the thing. And again, if you guys know Ronica, man, it is driving her nuts that she can't get up and do stuff. It's driving her crazy. So I, t- I keep her out of certain rooms because her mess is right now. <laughs> don't go, I'm not taking you in there because you don't want to see it. But then we got some flowers delivered to our house from Flowers by Nancy, I think it was, or whoever. It's not the point. And it was from Mike and Connie Williams. Well, she thought it was her cousin, Mikey. And then she realized that Mikey's wife's name is Janice. So then we started figuring it out. And I'm like, Mike and Connie, that's, that's our neighbors. They sent her flowers. So again, guys through all that we're seeing and again yeah it, it's awful guys and, and and i hope and pray that we never have to go through but again i'm a realist we know guys in the end days it's going to get worse before it gets better and again if we think this is the worst that it's going to get we're fooling ourselves because guys it's going to get a whole lot worse than this before jesus comes back as sad as, sad as that is i've got kids here and i've got grandkids here I know that 
these are going to be referred to as the good old days for them, right? I mean, the good old days for me was, was pulling bubble gum off the bottom of my desk at school. Those were the good old days. But guys, again, I, I say that to say this, guys, is that, you know, the Apostle Paul reminds us in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, that, that, that through this, that we need to walk worthy of our calling. Because again, it, it would be so easy and so simple for us as a church to conform to what's going on in the world today. The world doesn't see, need to see a conforming church. What the world needs to see is a transformed church. A church that is going to walk worthy of our calling, worthy of our vocation. What does Paul mean by that, guys? Who are we? What is our identity today? Go ahead and say it's all right to say we're in church. Who are we? We are children of Almighty God. So who does the world need to see the church acting like? God's children, we, the world needs to see us not acting like the world, but acting like our Savior. And guys, again, the only hope for America is not who's going to win the 2020 election, guys, because I can promise you this, whoever it is, is not the Messiah. Jesus Christ is still the Savior of the world, is still the Messiah, is still the anointed one. And he's still the only hope for the United States of America. But what it's going to take is for the church of the living God to humble itself and get on our knees before a holy God and cry out to him and start walking worthy of our calling. To come out from among the world and be what? Separate. You know what separate means, guys? Different. That when they look at us, they see that there is something different about them. Not only is there something different about them, but I want what they've got. Guys, I want to live my life in such a way that when people look at me, they say, you know what? I don't know what he's got, but man, I want it. Listen, I don't know what, what, what's happened in his life. Listen, I don't, listen, how can he still have joy through all this? How can he still put a smile on his face? How can he still find joy in the most difficult time that this nation has ever faced? You know how? I've got Jesus. You know why the Apostle Paul and Silas can, could shout and praise and pray at midnight when they're sitting in a prison cell? Because they had Jesus. You know, you know why the Apostles could live victorious lives in spite of the circumstances around them? They had a relationship with Jesus Christ. And guys, through all this, and guys, I'm not trying to diminish again the, the, the terrible times that people are facing right now, but I want to remind us and encourage us today as children of God, through this time, we need to stand out and be different. If I polled you right now, I, I can almost promise you this. If I was to ask you, do you think the United States of America is divided right now? Would anybody say no to that? And guys, again, it would be easy for the church to watch what's going on, right? And conform to it and be just as divided. Now is not the time for the church to be divided. Now is the time for the church to be united. Satan is all about division, guys, and Jesus is all about unity. And again, when you look at the first three chapters of the book of Ephesians, guys, again, you see, I mean, Paul just drills doctrine, man. Focuses on all doctrine. And then we come to chapter 4, guys, and now there's a shift. He goes from doctrine, and again, again, everything that we believe or should be believing, to now our conduct and our behavior. And how many times have you heard your pastor say, what you believe will dictate your behavior? Are we seeing that today? in America guys can I just say this people are believing there's no consequences for what they're doing so how are they going to behave just like they're behaving people say are you mad what's going on in the country no I am absolutely heartbroken by what's going on in the country not mad devastated heartbroken I'm 50 years old guys I never dreamed I would ever see what's going on in the United States of America right now. I 
Guys, I would have never dreamed that, that again, because of one man's actions, now the whole nation is, is divided because of one man. And guys, it's just been a complete domino effect. We've quit talking about a virus now, and now we're talking about riots. And there's so much division, guys, going on in this world. And again, if the church of Christ is not careful, guys, we can buy into it, and we can be divisive. And so, guys, again, what I wanted to focus on for the next few weeks, you have to come back next week and the week after, guys, because you're only going to get part one today, and then part two next week, and then part three the week after. Um, so don't say you can watch it on live stream because we're going to shut that off next week. I'm just kidding. Because, again, how do, how do we do that? How do we walk worthy of our calling? Here's number one. We walk as Jesus walked. Walk as Jesus walked. Go again, Ephesians 4, look at verses 1 and 2. I therefore, the Apostle Paul, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you. Now, I love that word beseech, guys, because it means to call to one side. It means to exhort. It means to encourage. It means to strengthen by reassuring. I beseech you, and again, you. He's talking to the individual, guys. Not just individuals, but again, guys, a corporate. But, but here, he's focusing on the individual. That you do what? That you walk. So again, when Paul's talking about walking, guys, he means to walk around. And again, it, it speaks of how we live our lives day by day. Paul's not concerned about how you live on Sunday. <laughs> the world is not concerned, guys, on how we as the church live our lives on Sunday. They want to see how we're going to live our life on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Listen, listen it's easy to walk worthy of our calling today, amen? Most of you got smiles on your faces this morning. And you guys know my rule. We're not leaving until everybody smiles. So we'll be here till Monday if we have to. Which probably bring a smile to your face because you'll miss work. <laughs> but guys, again, to walk worthy of our vocation. Again, to live our lives day by day according to our calling. Guys, to not walk as Jesus walked just on Sunday, but to walk as Jesus walked every single day of our lives, every moment of our lives. Now again, people will say, Pastor, that's impossible. No, it's not. Guys, again, all you have to do is, how did Jesus walk? Here's how you do, guys. You just get into his word, study his life, and say, you know what? That's exactly what I want to be like. Again, how many of you would agree today that the world needs to see who Jesus is? How are they going to do that? Because they've never seen him. They see Jesus through who? Us, the church. Guys, listen, when Jesus left, he said, listen, because, again, he's the light of the world, but guys, again, Matthew tells us what? Ye are the light. Jesus said, you are the light and the salt of the world. Jesus knew that he wasn't always going to be here. So again, what he did is he turned over the responsibility to the church to be salt and light. And again, guys, I'm just being honest. That's not easy to do in the world that we live in today, is it? But guys, it is so needed today. Because here's the reality, guys. There are still people in the United States of America who need to be saved. There are still people right here in our own backyard that need to be saved. And guess what? You want to transform a community? You share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. I told the church last night, how awesome would it be, guys, if this, and I've said this many times, and I'm going to keep saying it, keep saying it, keep saying it. Think about our small community, guys, 12,000 people. Listen, it doesn't even matter if just 12,000 of them are saved. Let's just say half of them. Do you think our community would look different with 6,000 followers of Jesus who are walking worthy of their calling, who have just made decisions in their life that you know what? Listen, I don't care what it costs me. And by the way, guys, it's going to cost us. If, and again, let me just say this. If we think for one single second that they're not coming after the church, we are absolutely fooling ourselves. Mark it down. You heard it here first. I'm not, I'm not this prophet and this, that, and the other, guys. But I truly believe, guys, in 2021, we're going to start seeing a little bit of persecution against the church. I just believe that. And so, again, guys, we need to understand that in spite of that, we need to do what? Rise above it. And, guys, again, I always use the Apostle Paul because the Apostle Paul is my, probably my, outside of Jesus, my favorite Bible character. 
difference. Outside of Jesus, if there's anybody else that I want to be like, it's like the Apostle Paul. That's why Paul said, follow me. Why? Because I follow Jesus. I'm emulating the life of my Savior, so as a result of that, you follow me. And as a result of that, guys, again, it did, Paul didn't care what it cost him. I told our folks last night, I said, I wish, I wonder how the Apostle Paul would preach today. You think he let some churches have it? <laughs> he let some churches have it in the New Testament. But you think we'd be any different? But guys, through this, it would be easy for us as the church to, to, to be arrogant and obnoxious and be pharisaical. I'm glad I'm not like the rioters. No, but Paul reminded us some war, you were such like that before you got saved. Right? Oh man, I'm glad I'm not like these protesters out there. No, you're not. Because last time I checked, the Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We just sin differently, Pastor. Right? Well, I'm not doing what they're doing. I'm not out here, you know, committing murder and, and you know, looting and this, that, and the other. But no, we have other issues in our lives. Guys, the Bible says without faith, it's what? Impossible to please God. So what does that make lack of faith? Sin. Who said that? Look at my man right there. Hunter, how old are you, my man? Aren't you glad kids get it? <laughs> we don't sometimes. But man, 10 years old, 9 years old. Listen, I would never have thought of asking a question, man, is, how, how do you know the God of the Bible is different than the other gods of these other religions? And how do you answer that to a 9-year-old? But guys, again, we need to realize again that it's time for us to humble ourselves and, and show the love the mercy and the grace of God through all this. And the way that we do that, guys, is we walk the way the Lord Jesus Christ walked. We emulate him as, as, as closely as we can. You know, the Bible refers to us as ambassadors of Christ. You know what an ambassador is, guys? It's a representative. And it doesn't say you're ambassadors of the church, you're ambassadors of pastors. Guys, we're ambassadors of Christ. And so with that being said, who are we to show the world? Christ, not us. Guys, I've said this a million times too. And listen, people have said this to me, guys. Listen, I can't wait to come hear you preach. Guys, I don't want you to come and see me. I want you to come and see my Jesus. And I hope and pray that I portray my Jesus to you. So again, he says that, that, as a, as, that we walk worthy of our vocation wherewith we are called. And then here's, here's the point I want to make today. With all what? What's the first word, the first point tonight, today? Loneliness. Guys, you know what loneliness is? Humility. But guys, again, we, we live in a world today. We live in a culture that looks at humble people as what? Weak. The last time I checked, guys, my Jesus is not weak and never was weak. So again, when people look at the church and say, oh, you're just this weak Christian. No, we're just humble enough, humble enough, guys, to realize that without Jesus Christ, we are absolutely nothing and we can do nothing. And what I want you to see is, again, through my humility and through my humbling myself and understanding that, guys, again, it's not about me, it's all about him, is that you understand in your own life personally that it's not about you, it's all about him. And that your greatest need is not me or not anything else. Your greatest need is Christ. Guys, all through the ministry of Jesus Christ, who was he dependent upon? The Father. I do always those things that please him. I must be about my father's business. He submitted himself to the will of who? His father. 
even in the garden when he's praying who's he praying to his father and he says lord listen if it be possible let this cup pass from me nevertheless not my will but thine be done guys the same jesus that we serve is the same jesus that served us first the same Jesus, guys, that we are called to love is the same Jesus that loved us first. We love him, why? Because he first loved us. And guys, here's what salvation is in a nutshell, guys. Humbling yourself before a, before a holy, righteous God, acknowledging the fact that you are separated from God for, because of your sins, that you cannot save yourself, and that you need Jesus Christ. Even after we get saved, guys, that need for Jesus doesn't change. I need thee every hour. But again, our mentality is that, well, I got, I'm saved now, so I don't, I don't, listen, God, I'll call you when things get tough. Guys, things are pretty tough right now. And you know what we need to do? Cry out. But you know what it's going to take, guys? Us becoming lowly. How many of you were here when I did the sermon with the white flag? How many of you still have your white flag? You all did better than Saturday Night Crowd. I think one person still had theirs. So I did an altar call right then, and I'm just kidding. What was the white flag representative of? Surrender to who? Every time you look at that white flag, what does it remind you of? That we are surrendered. And guys, again, submission to who? Our Savior. But guys, you know what that takes? Us humbling ourselves, guys. Because again, if we're all honest with ourselves today, we can fix all the world's problems. Right? If we, just, if we just get this person in office or this person in office, or if we just do this, and by the way, guys, I'm not saying don't go vote. You need to still go vote. But our mentality now is, listen, if we can just do this, no, guys, if we can just get America to turn its heart back to Christ, we'll see a huge change. If we'll see this country going back to what, it was very, what its very foundation was, guys, the morality, the morals, and the principles of the Word of God, we'll see a difference in America. Guys, we're not going to see a difference in America based on who's in the White House. Guys, we're going to see a difference in America when the church of Jesus Christ exalts and glorifies our Savior and humbles ourselves and realizes it's not about us, but it's about Him. And the world doesn't need to see the church. The world needs to see Jesus Christ. But it's going to take the church to reveal Jesus Christ. Lowly humbling ourselves guys and again paul beseeches them to do this so here's what paul is saying we are to live our lives in such a way guys again because the word worthy means equal weight or balanced and again paul is saying we should behave in a way that is equal with our calling and again to live our lives and again by that we are we with the balance of the scales we add something of equal value with what we have been given in jesus and again, if you want to know what you've been given in Jesus, just go back and read the first three chapters of Ephesians. And I promise you this, guys, when you realize, man, when you realize again everything that Jesus Christ has given to us, how can we not just give him our lives? And again, Jesus Christ, the most humble person who has ever walked this planet. Philippians 2, 3, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. And then he would also say in verses 7 and 8, talking about Jesus, he made himself of no rep reputation. He took upon him the form of a servant. He was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And guys, what I love the most about chapter, chapter 2 in Philippians, guys, is again what God the Father did because Jesus humbled himself. Because again, look at, if you write down verses 9 through 11. 
Wherefore, as a result of Jesus, guys, humbling himself and, and, and again, realizing, again, that he could do nothing except from, through his Father, humbling himself before his Father, because of that, guys, therefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in th of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He highly exalted him as a result of Jesus Christ as humble servant submitting to the will of the Father, and he highly exalted him. Church, can I tell you today that it's no different for us as children of God. When we humble ourselves before God and in submission to his will and his way, guys, he will highly exalt us. James 4, 6, he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resist the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. 1 Peter 5, 6, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. And then Luke 14, 11, this speaks a whole lot in one verse. Whosoever exalts himself, pride, shall be abased. You know what the word abased means? It means to be cast down. So here's my question, guys. Do we want to be exalted or do we want to be cast down? Because again, after he says that, he says, and he that humbles himself shall be exalted. And then Colossians 3.12, put on therefore the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. And the idea Paul has when he says to put on, guys, it means to dress yourself with clothes. It means to take on or assume certain virtues and qualities. And whose, whose virtues and qualities should we be putting on? The Lord Jesus Christ's virtues and qualities. Like I said, guys, God has been amazing through this. I've, I've never done as many Zoom calls in my life. I got tired of looking at some pastors' faces. I love them. And it's because I miss my family so much. I've never listened to more LifeWay research stuff than I have in the last 10 weeks. I've never listened to more Tom Rainer than I've listened to in the last 10 weeks. And that's all good, guys. I'm not saying I'm not diminishing how smart those guys are a lot smarter than I am but guys one of the things I've realized through all this guys is yeah all those things are great but if they're done without the spirit of humility we're no different than what they do out there as CEOs of companies it's no different than what you'll see in Amazon headquarters if we do this in our own power and our own strength, guys, we're going to, yeah, we may succeed for a little bit. But eventually we're going to fall on our face. I told Ronica, guys, and I remember this like it happened yesterday. When our president got elected in 2016, and I still believe this to be true, guys. I said, I truly believe that God has given America one more chance. I don't say that to bring fear or to cause you guys to concern yourself. And like I said, guys, I'm not this great prophet. And I just know what the future holds. And I know what's coming. And we're starting to see the beginnings of the stuff that's coming. I do. I believe that was God's chance for America. I got so excited when Jerusalem became the capital once again. Because I believe that's what's saving us right now. It's because of our relationship with Israel. Because last time I checked, God still loves Israel. And so guys, again, we need to be abased. We can exalt ourselves, and God will bring us to our knees and say, okay, it's about you. Well, let's see how well you do. Or we can humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, and when we do that, he will exalt us. Guys, I want to walk like my Jesus walked. 
And I want you guys to follow your pastor because you see your pastor following in the footsteps of Jesus. Not because I'm this great pastor. I want to be a great pastor. But I want to be a great pastor for the glory of God, not for the glory of Tim Smith or for the glory of First Baptist Church of Trenton. I want to be a great pastor because I want people, when they see him, say, man, he's a great pastor because of who he knows. He's a great pastor because of who he walks with. He's a great pastor because he walks in the footsteps of his Savior. And I want you to be a great Christian for the very same reasons. But you know what all that's going to take? Us coming to God humbled. Hands out wide open. And say, here. God, I'm tired of giving you 50% of me. I'm tired of giving you 60% of me. I'm tired of giving you 75% of me. God, I'm tired of giving you 80% of me. God, I'm humbling myself today and say, here, you have 100% of Tim Smith today. You have 100% of Chris Burchell. You have 100% of, of Phil Smith. You have 100% of Emily Smith. You have 100% of David Toole. I'm not going to mention all your names because we'll be here all the rest of the afternoon. And I promise you this, guys, if we'll do that, not only will you see a difference here, but you'll see a difference there. Because, again, as we start to humble ourselves and realize, again, man, I just want to be like Jesus and not just in the sanctuary, but when I leave this place, you'll see a difference in our community. By the way, I'm blessed by our community too, by the way. I'm thankful for our community. Not perfect, but it's okay. But as Jesus said, you know what, guys, again, to humble ourselves. Let me close with these verses. I'm going to ask Brother Tim to come on up. And the praise team. James 4.10, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. He shall lift you up. Proverbs 22.4. By humility and fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Proverbs 29, 23. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Guys, again, when we humble ourselves before God, he loves that. And again, when we as men and women of God measure ourselves not against one another, but when we measure ourselves against Christ, when we measure ourselves against perfection, when we measure ourselves against the one who is without sin, I hope and pray that it brings us to our knees in absolute humbleness and realize, you know what, Lord? I am what I am because of you. Guys, why are we children of God? Not because any of us are good. The Bible says there is none good. Those are hard verses for us to read sometimes, aren't they? Because we like to look at ourselves and say, man, well, I'm a good, per I'm a pretty good person. You know, I did this, I did that, I did this, I did that. That's because we're measuring ourselves up against other people and not measuring ourselves up against Jesus. When you measure yourself up against the King of kings and Lord of lords, you know what it'll do? Boy, it'll cause you to really look at yourself. It'll really cause yourself to humble yourself and say, man, I've still got a lot of work to do. But you know what I love, guys? I love the fact that he's the potter, and we're what? We're the clay. And he's still got us on that wheel. Julie doesn't know this, but I'm working on a sermon right now where she's going to bring her potter's wheel in. And Where'd she go? Oh. <laughs> Just get ready. It could, be, it could be this Sunday. I don't know. Okay, that's fine. And you know what he's doing, guys? That clay looks ugly when it's just sitting on the table, doesn't it? And, and I want you to think about this. It's, it's nasty, it, it's wet, it's dirty, it's, it's, it's whatever. And, and then he starts to put his foot on the pedal. Is that what it's called, a pedal? The pedal, the wheel starts to spin, and he takes his hands and does what? Starts to fashion something. And by the end of the process... It no longer looks like that clump of clay. 
But unfortunately, to make it even more beautiful, it has to go through what? Fire. Fire. But man, when it comes out of the fire, that, that clump of clay is now this beautiful masterpiece. And guys, and that's exactly what God's doing in our lives right now. And he's asking us, are you just going to trust me through this? Are you going to keep walking through life dependent upon self? Or are you going to humble yourself and cry out to me and say, you know what? God, you can do a whole lot more with this than I can. God, you're still molding me. I'm still on this table. I'm still being spun. But unfortunately, I'm not in your hands right now because I'm trying to do it myself. But God, at the end of the day, I don't want to just stay there at that clump. So God, I know that, that through life, I'm going to have to go through the fire. But I know that when I go through the fire, that you're still with me. And it's through the fire, guys, when we survive the fire that we look back and we say, man, look how much more beautiful the church looks as a result of going through fire. And by the way, church, you study church history, and every time the church has gone through difficulty, guess what? It has become more and more and more beautiful. But guys, again, it's going to take us realizing that we need Him. We are clay in the potter's hands. And He's molding us and making us and conforming us more and more into His very image. And that through this fire, guys, what I want to do is that when it comes out of the, we mispronounce it, is it kiln? Um, some people say kill, some people say kiln, but it is spelled K I L N. <laughs> But when I come out of that, guys, I want to look more and more like my Jesus. And like I said, when you see the sermon, guys, you'll have to come back for it. You'll see what I'm talking about. Some of it's not making sense to you right now, but I hope it is. But guys, number one, it starts with, again, loneliness. And when you come back next week, we'll see. We'll go through the next two, and we're going to continue to focus on Ephesians 4. But we've got to humble ourselves. As I've already said, guys, you know what salvation is? The first step of salvation is humbling yourself, realizing you can't save yourself. Realizing that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and that no man comes to the Father but by Him. He is the only way to, to eternal life. So with your heads bowed and your eyes closed this morning, this right here is the most important part of the service. It's decision time. I wish I could stand up here and make decisions for you, but I can't. I wish I was 100% certain that 100% of you were saved today, but I don't know that. You see, I don't see your heart, but God does. But again, I know that God is looking for some broken people. He's looking for brokenness, guys. And salvation is coming to the end of yourself, being broken and realizing, I need Jesus. And if you're here right now and you say, Pastor, I'm not sure I'm saved. I'm not sure if I die today, if I go to heaven or hell. Pastor, would you pray for me right now? If that's you, would you just slip up your hand? Pastor Tim, would you pray for me? I'm not sure I'm saved. Anybody here today? And then church, we're going to sing just, just one verse of this invitation song. But before we do that, I want to do the same thing I did with our Saturday night crowd. If you're here right now and you say, Pastor Tim, I, I just need prayer. Pastor, I need to humble myself. I, I need to cry out to God today. I need to turn some things over to Him that I'm still battling and holding on to. Pastor, would you pray for me? 
And listen, if you need prayer right now, just slip up your hand. My hand's up right now, guys, because I need prayer. Thank you. Anybody else? Pa- all over. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Father in heaven, we come to you this morning. God, to just say thank you. God, left to ourselves, it would be so destructive. God, left to our own devices, God, we would be people without any hope. But I am so thankful this morning that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, into this world to become sin for us who knew no sin, that we could become the righteousness of God in him. And God, my prayer, my heart's desire for myself first and foremost and for your bride today is that we get on our knees, we humble ourselves, and we cry out to you. God, that we realize that we cannot go through this life apart from you. God, that we need you, not just today, but we need you tomorrow. We need you every single day of our lives, every hour of our lives. And God, for those hands that were lifted up, God, you know the needs. And God, I want to pray that you would meet those needs, meet them even beyond their expectations. Because, God, we serve a God who is exceedingly, abundantly able, again, if we just ask, to do what we ever ask or think. And so, God, as we leave this place today, I pray that we've been encouraged, challenged, and changed. God, we all need to humble ourselves today, God. God, we all need to realize who we are apart from you. But to get excited that that we are children of the Most High God. So, Lord, we love you, and we thank you for this wonderful, wonderful day. In Christ's name, amen. You stand with me if you would.